Hi and welcome to this series of videos on a topic and the topic related to AR tags. So in this first video I'm going to show you how to add uh, a gazebo in gazebo and um, AR tag. This is based on the question formulated by this user which basically what he wants is to have an AR tag in gazebo. There are already answers giving some some heads on and some solutions on this. I'm going to show you how to generate it step by step and hopefully it will be helpful for you and you'll be able to generate any kind of AR tags in simulation in gazebo. Okay, so let's get started. So the first thing, the first thing is that you have to go to your a Catkin workspace on whatever system you're using. So in my case, I'm using ROS Development Studio, which is a web-based platform for, do for doing this. You can simulate anything in Gazebo, and you have already ROS, in this case, Indigo installed. So the first thing, I go to the IDE, and I go to my Catkin workspace. So I just double-click, and then I'll you see that I have some packages already here. We will concentrate on this ER, AR track Alvar, which is, if you go to the documentation, it's basically a package that allows you to track and not only track, but generate your own AR tags. And this is very useful because you can embed in these tags, in this AR tags, you can embed data, numbers, and with that you can track many different objects and have information about them. So one of the neat features of this package is that you can launch this, this, this script that generates your own markers. So let's have a look. So we copy and we go here to our web shell, whatever this one. I've already done a test here, so let's just clear this, sorry. And we copy paste. And this is using the AR track Alvar package and launching create marker. So you have some indications on the data here. The most important thing is the ID that you give to the tag and also that dimensions have very present what are the default dimensions. Okay, so if you see here, it states that the default dimensions are nine centimeters by nine centimeters. This is very important when you generate the model, because if you do a model bigger than this, the tracking won't work as well as it should but you can state any size of the marker, basically. So you say it's five centimeters or I don't know, one meter, whatever you want, and many other functions. But in this case, we are going to just use the default settings except the IDs. So you have a prompt here and you just state, okay, I want to give, I don't know, the tag, let's say one, two, three, four to be originals and we press enter. Then we say the position of X, Y, and Z. In this case, we get the defaults, and that's it. To exit, just minus one. And if all went well, if we, we see that where we executed the script, a tag will be generated which has this one, two, three, four tag embedded inside. Okay, that's it. We have our tag generators already. So the next thing we can, in my case, I have to download it and go there. And copy it here. Okay, we have our tag. I have one example here already. And next step. Well, the next step is using Blender. 
So you just have to start a new a new, a new file in Blender and you have the basic scene here. So the first thing you have to do is select the units. The, this is very important to have them correct. Otherwise you ha you'll have you'll end up with a model that doesn't have the dimensions that it should and therefore the tracking won't be as good. So now we have meters here. So the first thing we're going to do now is we are going to uh, put in, in the dimensions that we want. Okay, so let's first thing we are going to press S. See what I'm typing here. And then type. So if you press S and then 0 0.5 and then press N, you'll see that now we have the scale and we have a cube of dimensions one meter by one meter. This will help us then put it in the right units. So here now we are going to scale it again now to nine centimeters. That would be S and then 0 0.09. And there we go. Now we have a cube of nine centimeters per side. Okay. If we put it in this view and then put it like this, we now can scale the Z, for example, S and then Z, and we scale it. There we go. So now basically we have a tag, the dimensions that we wanted. Okay, now we, we can close this. Next step. The next step is adding the, the texture. For this, you have to click on the material tag, remove any materials that we have by default, generate a new one, and then go to textures. Let's put that up here. And then we hit new. And then we open the image and we are going to get, for example, the one, two, three, four. Okay. And hit enter. And now we have the texture here selected. So now the next step is going to UV editing. So we have this here. We go to the UV window and we select the image. There we go. Once we have it, then we go here and let me put this here. Here we have to press tab, then select all like this. Okay. And then hit U and wrap. That way we are unwrapping each of these sides here. Okay. So now we can return to our default view and we can go to texture and there we go. So now we have our, obviously it's not the best way of do, doing it. You can do it much better, but this is the fastest way of doing it. So now you have the tag with the frame, the black frame and the data here. So perfect. So there you have it. So now you can export this. To export this, you just have to, this is very important, you now go here and you deselect everything. We remove all the things that we don't need. There we go. Now we select the model. We only have the cube. And here we do hit export to Collada in this case. So now we go to desktop, for example, and we say, okay, I want my cube, I don't know, my AR tag. It's not important for the moment. 
there we go. Let me show you again, just to check that we did it correctly. So here we have, here is to apply any modifiers that you applied, so in this case nothing. Then selection only, in this case it's not very important. And then you have only selected UV map, you can select UV textures or materials. We'll select materials, okay? And then you hit export, okay? So now, if we go to here, let me go here and let me uh, go to desktop and we go to our AR tag. You have to check that we have the image of the PNG correct. So marker data one, two, three, four, and that it's somewhere stating that. Okay. So there we go. So now we have the materials, we have everything we need. So that's it. So now we return to our system and we can see here that I've generated some URDFs. So if we go to URDFs, I've generated an AR URDF, which is basically a box with some dimensions and then the mesh, the package, the, pack, uh, the package where it is, the meshes, where are the meshes and the die. In this case we'll use this one, I have already set it up, but in your case you'll just have to mm, put it in the gazebo models in the case that you are using something special depends on, on your system. In this case, we just have to put it in our package. So here I have a folder that states meshes and I have my PNG, which has this tag in this case. And then I have the die, mo the, the die file, okay? And then I've generated a launch here, which is spawning the the AR tag which uses this spawn robot URDF launch which is if we go here it's a package that I've generated for this and it's spawn robot URDF and what it does is take the robot name and the URDF file load it in the robot description and then spawn it with uh, X, Y, and Z, roll and pitch and yaw to the scene. That's it. So now we just have to spawn it. So if we go here, let's... If we go here, we can... Let me see... Ross Launch green bot in this case description spawn air tag and there we go so now we have an air tag in gazebo so in this case how can we test that the robot is can see this exactly this what is seeing so the best way of doing this is using, let me, if you do a ROS run, RQT, image view, image view, and then you launch this and you go then, you open the graphical tool and you see, in this case it's already selected, but you just have to select the image topic of your system, in this case is this one, and you can see what the robot is really seeing. So if we go here and we move it closer, put it here, 
There we go. Whoops. There we go. This is what the robot is exactly seeing. Okay. So now, uh, in this case, I have already a system, AR tracking system working. It's very basic and it doesn't work as, as well as it should because it's only using the cameras. So if we do a ROS topic, in this case, you see, it's detecting and stop it. So in this case, it's stating that it's around this position relate, relative to the base link of our robot and it's detecting it there more or less okay so we can do the following we can do ROS run uh, sorry yeah or rviz and we can go here and we can select the base link base base link there we go and now we are getting a marker and let me select the marker there we go ah, there we go so that's the detection that the robot is doing so it's detecting more or less that it's really, really close. So if we add, for example, the TFs, let me add the TFs, the robot, and now just get out the names. So these are the TFs basically of the robot. So it's detecting it really close. That's just because the detection system is not properly calibrated but it's working so it's detecting a U an AR tag in gazebo that we just generated with blender okay i hope you like the video if you're interested in more videos about AR tags and how we we really detect and make the detections robust and hit a give us a thumbs up and see you in the next video. Bye.